This is Seven National News and in our top story. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai, has launched the Dubai blockchain strategy to achieve a high degree of efficiency in government departments by becoming paperless and shifting all transactions to blockchain by 2020. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan was quoted saying that Dubai will become the first government in the world to execute all its transactions on blockchain, which is an online encrypted database, and their aim is to make life and work easier for people in the Emirate. While stating that the Dubai blockchain strategy aims to unlock 25 million hours of economic productivity annually in saved document processing time. The Crown Prince also added that this will help in cutting almost 100 million paper transactions every year. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan also revealed that the Dubai Future Foundation has been tasked with overseeing the implementation of the strategy, while the Smart Dubai office will monitor its execution. The blockchain strategy, according to officials, is based on three themes. Efficiency, creating new specialised sectors and achieving global leadership. And it is expected to boost the productivity of employees and leave a positive impact on the national economy. The strategy comes in line with the Dubai Future Agenda that aims to transform the UAE into a global centre for designing the future. The International Hunting and Equestrian Exhibition is a model for innovation and creativity for all those involved in equestrian and hunting sports in the Gulf region and beyond. That's according to His Highness Sheikh Nahyan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan Charitable and Humanitarian Foundation, who's also the Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Sports Council. His Highness was speaking during a tour of the 14th International Hunting and Equestrian Exhibition that's running to the 8th of October. He was briefed by the director of the exhibition, Abdullah al Kabasi, about the event and visited some of the stands of the 650 exhibitors. al Kabasi revealed that this edition boasts a more commercial approach with a lot more matchmaking for companies. But there's also a heavy emphasis on culture, heritage and environment, highlighted by the participation of government organisations that have put a lot of effort into showcasing their work. Outdoor enthusiasts have been enjoying cultural activities from horses, safaris and hunting to arts, outdoor sports and falconry. A number of workshops set up for children also allows school children to learn about Emirati culture and heritage, while adults could be seen learning about how to make traditional Arabic coffee and watching Emirati handicrafts. The UA consulate over in New York has issued a warning to Emiratis living in Florida as a major hurricane is expected to hit the East Coast on Thursday night. After hitting Haiti and Cuba in the Caribbean, Hurricane Matthew is moving on a northwesterly track. That's according to weather forecasters who have put it on a collision course with the eastern coast of Florida. According to reports, President Barack Obama said in a televised broadcast that the storm is considered serious. In a series of tweets, the UA consulate warned Emiratis to stay, to stay tuned to weather updates on the hurricane which has been classified as a Category 4 hurricane. Nearly 69 million new teachers are needed to provide quality universal primary and secondary education by 2030. That's according to the United Nations Education, Science and Cultural Organization. UNESCO revealed the statistics on the occasion of World Teacher Day for the deadline of the new UN Sustainable Development Goals. Under the Sustainable Development Goal 4, which calls for ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education, it also includes a specific call for more qualified teachers and more support from the international community for teacher training in developing countries. According to the UIS data, Sub-Saharan Africa has the largest teacher gap and the region will need about 17 million primary and secondary teachers by 2030. 
UNESCO added that more than 70% of its countries face acute shortages of primary school teachers, and 90% of them face serious shortages in secondary education. Southern Asia has the second largest teacher gap. Only 65% of youth across their region are enrolled in secondary education, and the pupil-teacher ratio is estimated at 29 for 1. That's far higher than the global average of 18 for 1. The region needs another 15 million teachers by 2030, the vast majority of 11 million at secondary level. The UA Ministry of Education has signed a seven-year agreement with the global learning science company McGraw-Hill Education with the aim of enhancing the country's education system. The agreement will enable McGraw-Hill Education to provide instructional material in ebook and print formats to K-12 maths and science students. His Excellency Hussein bin Ibrahim Al Hamadi, the UA Minister of Education, was quoted in a newspaper saying that the content for each curricular programme was selected based on the most advanced and progressive material developed for US standards. And the new world-class curriculum is also aligned with the UA National Standard Framework. All material has already been created in Arabic and was delivered in August for the 2016-17 academic year. His Excellency Al Hamadi also stressed that the UA's economic growth depends on investing in education in order to build a knowledge-based society and innovation economy. And these new instructional materials are clearly aligned with the school curricula across the country. While stating that the UA is an emerging global education hub, the president and CEO of McGraw-Hill Education highlighted that the programme will be impactful to educational outcomes in the UAE, the GCC and the wider world. The Sharjah municipality is offering a 20% discount on parking subscriber fees for retirees, university students, as well as local and federal government employees in the Emirate. Municipality officials were quoted saying that the initiative is for exceptional subscription card holders offered to citizens and expats based in the Emirate. It was further added that the 20% discount is offered in all three subscription categories. Giving more details, municipality officials stated that a three-month subscriber belonging to the exceptional category will now pay 600 dirhams for parking. A six-month subscriber will need to pay 1,050 dirhams and an annual subscriber is expected to pay 1,850 dirhams for their parking. The documents required to avail of the discounts include car registrations, employee cards and ID cards. All three types of parking cards are being offered, including personal, commercial and exceptional subscribing cards. And finally, GEMS Education announced the recipient of its inaugural Mariama Varki Award for inspirational and outstanding teaching at GEMS. Instituted in honour of Mariama Varki, the founder of GEMS Education's first school. Teachers from each school within the GEMS group were nominated and recognised at a ceremony last night, attended by the Chairman of the Board of Directors, the Director General of Dubai Knowledge, Dr Abdullah Al Karam, who gave out thank you certificates to the nominees. According to Sunny Varki, the founder and chairman of GEMS Education, the award aims to further elevate the standards of teaching and to inspire the teaching community. It's extremely important because the quality of the teaching and learning cannot be higher than the quality and the, and the, of the teachers themselves. They are the one who makes the difference. They are the one who's interacting on hourly basis with the students. Their role is fundamentally important to everything that, that the students do. So to be able to recognize them in this way, in this fashion, is extremely important for us and to say thank you and thank you because today also is the teacher uh, day and i also would like to congratulate uh, mr varki for doing it and it's really nice because he combined two things he combined the teacher's award with his mother's name so recognizing the mother at home and the teacher in the classroom first of all i think we must thank the uae government for having policies that will help uh, private sector to grow and at the end of the day you know education is all about 
uh, at times there must be a public-private partnership. And I think UAE is a, is a great place, a great country where this can be seen. And teachers play a very, very important role. And, and at GEMS, you know, we are, by God's grace, we are the largest provider in this part of the world. And therefore, we are doing things that we like other people to follow. Uh, and we want to raise the bar all the time. Uh, not only in, 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 in respecting and rewarding teachers, but also uh, in terms of academic standards uh, of, our, of our schools. So I think we are privileged in a way. So, so I think we have to set an example all the time, by God's grace. We would encourage as a family that, uh, that, that we want more and more good students to take up teaching as a profession, because that's the only way uh, you, know, you can change the world and make it a better place for the future generations to come. Held on the 5th of October to coincide with International Teachers' Day, the award is considered a tribute to Mariama Varki, who set the fundamentals of the GEMS Education Network. According to school representatives, the nominated teachers were evaluated on the basis of several criteria, including responsiveness to needs and strengths of students from diverse linguistic, cultural, religious and socio-economic backgrounds, as well as the demonstration of innovative practices that engage and support all students. Nominated by peers and chosen by a judging panel, Debbie Jo Miranda from Winchester School, Jebel Alley, was the recipient of this year's award of 220,000 dirhams. As you can hear, there are some very happy teachers uh, and incredibly proud, incredibly proud of the work that they do. Um, we believe that education is the most important issue in the world today. Uh, advancing education for all is a, is a cause that we're very passionate about. It's something that my father in his role has spearheaded for many, many decades. But for us, how do you advance that education? How do you advance education for all? It's the teacher. The teachers are the most important catalyst for us to achieve that objective. And if we're successful in achieving that objective, if we're able to provide education for all, then we believe that we have the solution to address the world's most pressing problems. So therein lies the importance of the teacher. I would say that this award I receive on behalf of all the teachers out there in the world. And uh, I believe this is um, a tribute, I guess, to all those teachers who've sacrificed and devoted their lives to all students around the world. So yes, I would say just love the children unconditionally. Forget that they're their, your students. Just love them and they will love you back. And when there is love, you can achieve anything and that nothing's impossible. So yes, just love them and the rest will flow.